Let us look at an example ANSYS model and apply the concepts of the joint diagram to gain a better understanding. Here we have a simplified model of a typical bolted joint. Assume that we have done some hand calculations of our design through which we have arrived at an estimate that the joint will experience an external load of 9500 Newton. We have chosen an M10 bolt with a tensile stress area of 58 square millimeter and a proof strength of 225 MPa providing a 13,050 Newton proof load capacity. In doing so, we have built-in safety factor if the joint does separate. The bolt we have chosen will be capable of withstanding the full external load. Various design guides provide preload recommendations ranging between 75 and 90 percent of the proof load. We use a factor of 0.75 giving a preload of 9787.5 Newton. Given our choice of an Ampton bolt, the bolt geometry in our model is represented by a cylindrical diameter such that its cross-sectional area is equal to the tensile stress area of an M10 bolt. From that information along with the thickness of the members, we can calculate the bolt and member stiffnesses and expected portion of the external load carried by the bolt. Turning to our simulation model, we in fact see that most of the external force was carried by the joint while only a small percentage of it resulted in an increase of the working load or total force in the bolt. Based on the formula for C, we see that the fraction of external load carried by the bolt depends on the relative stiffnesses of the bolt and the members. When we replace the two plates in our simulation with thinner plates, the grip length of the bolt changes. This results in an increase of both bolt stiffness and member stiffness as well as an overall increase in the C value. Thus, for the same applied bolt preload and same external force, the working load in the bolt increases when the ratio of member stiffness to the bolt stiffness decreases. This highlights the importance of ensuring that the members have enough stiffness relative to the bolt to ensure that majority of the external load goes into reducing the compression in the members rather than increasing the tension in the bolt. In the next case, we see the importance of tightening the bolt sufficiently that is applying a sufficient bolt preload. If we reduce the applied bolt preload and subject the joint to the same amount of external force, the fraction of external load carried by the bolt increases. In case of fatigue loading, this increase in the alternating load on the bolt makes the bolt more vulnerable to failure. Next, let's see what happens when a very large external force F acts on a bolted joint. As discussed before, force F reduces the clamping force on the joint and increases the load on the bolt. When the external force is very large, one of the two situations can occur. First, the total load acting on the bolt increases so much that it causes the bolt to yield. This will likely cause the bolt to fail. If not, the other possibility is that the clamping force on the joint reduces so much that it reaches zero. Any further increase in the external load will cause a gap to form between the two clamped parts and the entire external load F is now sustained by the bolt. This is another reason to apply sufficient bolt preload to ensure that the clamping force doesn't go to zero in the presence of external forces. This scenario will also likely cause bolt failure. Hence, usually the design criteria are set such that external forces do not cause gap formation under any circumstances. For cases involving simple geometries and uncomplicated loading patterns, we can use hand calculation and joint diagrams to validate the joint design. However, most cases in real life involve complex geometries and loads such that hand calculations are insufficient to predict the actual loads acting on the bolts and the clamped members. 
In such cases, it is essential to use finite element modeling to account for the possible complex deformation modes and resulting load distributions on the bolts and the clamp members.